So before I left for Gommel, a video popped up in my recommended. And I know this is kind of late. I know this is late news, it's old hat. But it comes courtesy of The Score Esports, okay? They do some esports documentary stuff. Is that the right word? They do esports videos. They do some esports stuff, and I was casually recommended of it. Oh, shit, I haven't seen this one. <laughs> no, 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 no. I saw this one. Aha. In case you guys did not see, Hungrybox tweeted this. It got 30,000 likes, and so this is ridiculous. What does he mean by that? I would love to know. As somebody who has been to these events and has been in the scene for a long time, I would like to see what the concern is and what people are thinking outside of the smash scope. Outside perspectives, in inter if this goes to YouTube, they're gonna be so confused. Guys, it's Pellegrino. If you're watching on YouTube, if this goes to, it's Pellegrino, it's just water, okay? Try it sometime. So, on Sunday, Super Smash Bros. Melee Pro Hungrybox tweeted out a picture of his prize for placing fifth at CEO 2022's Melee Tournament. True, he did. A whole $75. Woo! This kickstarted a massive conversation about Melee prize pool, but whether or not TO should a pay out more dinner. or if top players should just shut up about this whole thing. Wait, did he say TO should pay more? But whether or not TO should pay out more. <laughs> Lazy and greedy tournament organizers. All they do is take money from the players. It's disgusting. $75 venue fee? For what? What are they even doing with all that money? Why HBOX got so little for top eighting one of the biggest tournaments of the year, and why we all need to stop having this conversation every few True, months. True, but what do you mean? I need to know what you mean first. And I can tell you whether or not you're right. <laughs> Plup made the Plup Club proud by bouncing back with an incredible 6-0 win in Grand Finals, but all anybody could talk about on Twitter after the fact was Hungrybox. Like I said earlier, As on per Sunday usual. after the tournament ended, Hungrybox Content tweeted out a picture warlord. of the envelope containing his prize replacing fifth, a whole 75 US dollars. I Obviously, mean, when you compare that to what you know. could be getting for fifth place in some other games major tournaments, it looks pretty low. But to be honest, it's not that crazy for melee tournaments. It's you don't not. play fighting games, most tournaments work like this. Everybody pays an entry fee, which is usually $10. Uh -huh. That fee goes into a pot, which is paid out to top eight. The majority of the money goes to the person who placed first, while a smaller uh. amount of money goes to the person who tied for eighth. So he knows, he kn okay. So this guy knows how tournaments work, good. That's good to know. Cause that was my concern going into this video. Maybe they don't really get how this operates. There's always been this conversation, and maybe he'll talk about it in a second, of like, maybe we should up the the the, the cost, right? Maybe we should ask more for entry instead of 10 bucks, make it 20. But then it's like, well, less people will enter. So maybe you'll make less money overall. I personally think, think that oh, upping entry isn't that big a deal. I think you're already spending all this money on flight, hotel, um, you know, Uber, stuff like that. I think an extra 10 bucks into the pot isn't crazy. That said, uh, that would push this prize from 75 to 150, which is not that much better. And, uh, I think some people believe that should not be paid out by the tourney, the O2 monsters, which totally makes sense. I agree with that too. Let me pay 200 for a hotel, but 10 more dollars for entry. Yeah, I, I always thought it was really weird how people would be so protective of their extra 10 or $15 or whatever it is that could go into the pot. But again, you know, you shouldn't tell people they, you know, I, I, I'm not going to tell people they're wrong for wanting to be frugal about that, right? Um, times are tough. Just don't come to the event and then, you know, let your wallet speak for it. There are a handful of tournaments that have pot bonuses, which is when someone throws in some money to make sure the top eight wow. makes extra cash. Someone. But those are really rare in Melee. Companies like Capcom <laughs> and Bandai will throw really in money for rare. Street Fighter and Tekken tournaments to drum up interest. But Nintendo <laughs> pretty much always ignores Melee tournaments. So CEO 2022 had 224 entries. Oh, he's doing the math. I was gonna do this. God bless you. Thank you for this. And at $10 a person, that's a $2,240 prize pool, mm -hmm. which roughly shakes out to $75 for fifth. For the record, Plup got around 1,120 bucks. Hold on.
Wait a minute. At Apex 2012, I got 25th. 224 entrants. 400 entrants. <laughs> I, I was curious because 224 for a major sounds like a brawl event. This is like old. That sounds like one of our old majors. Apex 2011? Brawl had two six. Damn! <laughs> oh, no! Wait, how did Brawl go up? That's kind of crazy. Why did Brawl's numbers go up in the few years? I felt like it would go. It goes up and then down. That's crazy. Let's go, Brawl. Damn, for 70, got 100 bucks for that. I just feel like, you know, 75 bucks, it kind of, it's not great, but, you know. I think HBox knew what he was doing here, you know? And, and to be fair, he was just trying to be funny. It's a funny image. It's a funny tweet. And I think that's all it should have been without the whole conversation around it. But let's continue. Jabaley's uh, quote retweet was hilarious. Dude, Jabaley came up to me after he did it. He's like, did you see my quote retweet? <laughs> no, I didn't, Jabaley. I did not. I did not. I'll take a look though, now that you said that. He was so proud. He knew since the second the brackets closed how much he stood to earn from winning the tournament. And yet, the tweet happened anyway. True. Look, I am not upset at Xbox for wanting more money for putting in work and literally doing his job all weekend. Wait, fallacy here. I don't think Xbox really wants more money for that. And I, I think if you don't know Xbox, you would you would make that assumption, right? That's what the tweet looks like. I think HBox is just shit posting. He's creating content. I think that's all it is. I'm sure that $75 feels like a slap in the face to him. And mm. for some folks, that $75 was doubly insulting because- CEO Oh shit, we're in this. Wait a minute. Is on the Panda Cup, a yeah. new Super Smash Bros. League Woo! organized by Panda Gaming in association with Nintendo. Some people were hoping- Licensed by Nintendo. We are licensed when the circuit was announced that Nintendo's involvement would lead to higher prize pools at events other than the finals. <laughs> oh, make a laugh. But that hasn't happened yet. Now, to be fair, Come on. is one of those lucky Come players on. who doesn't need to win a bunch of money from this tournament. He's on Team Liquid. He's probably paid a salary. He has successful Twitch <laughs> and YouTube channels. Fact of the matter is, most of the people who came to play in CEO came from out of town and lost money on the event. Yeah. Personally, I wish that anybody could make a living doing whatever they wanted to, like playing Melee, for example. But unfortunately, it's not the world we live in. So th this conversation is always very, uh, like, circular. There are some people that think that the best way to support a scene, strict pop bonuses. Pay out everybody. You know, if somebody plays your game, they should be able to play your game for a living and, and make money doing it. I am not of that belief. I am of the belief if uh, if you get money, you use it to fund the event and make the event experiential and make it like a big, cool experience, something like a Riptide or a Smash Con, something like that, you know? I always think back uh, to, I remember way back, <laughs> he is staring. I remember way back when Zero was winning everything in Smash 4. He was winning everything. There were people that found out what he was making for winning everything. And it was like, you know, 42k for the year or something or something like that. It wasn't a lot for being the best player in the world. And somebody was like, he should be making a lot more money. He should be rich from this. And I'm like, why? And I said, well, he's the best in the world at something. He should be compensated. He brings a lot of people entertainment and joy and blah, 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 entertainment, you know. But it's like, these sort of skills are only worth what people are willing to pay. You know, you could be the best at anything, but it doesn't mean that you, you can earn a living off of it, you know. It's a fine sentiment. It's a good idea, right? But if we can't make any money on the back end, how the hell are we going to fund it, you know? Coney Counterpoint. Overwatch players make tons of money and no one likes that game. True. That bubble's gonna burst any day now. Any day now. Here, it's gonna... Just waiting on the AstroTurf to, to... To go away. Bro, I'll never forget seeing the Overwatch shit. Everybody's like, oh, 15 million for a, for a franchise spot in Overwatch. 20 million. Teams bought that shit without a blink of an eye. I was like, that shit sucks. Ain't nobody gonna watch that. And and then I thought I was wrong because I was like, damn, people are paying for it. 
and then nobody watched that. <laughs> By the way, related, GameStop shares rise after board declares four for one stock split. And you guys said I shouldn't hold. You guys told me to sell. I still have my fucking GameStop stock because I bought in at $365. That's not a joke. I bought in at the peak. I bought in at $365 and I'm waiting for that. Wait till this four for one comes in. I'm gonna sell that shit expeditiously. I'm selling that shit the day of. July 22nd, I'm setting a fucking alarm. I don't think you know how stock splits work. I'm gonna read about it tonight. I don't know. From what I saw, I thought it was like I get four of them now. So my money quadruples. But I'll find out more after this stream. <laughs> Can't wait. <laughs> Dude. Dude. The, the experience of buying into the GameStop trade right before it started plumbing it again was one of the most aware moments of my life. Numbers CSGO go has sometimes. millions of players who are engaged in the competitive scene. League of Legends is one of the biggest games on the planet. Riot wants to make sure that Valorant is a hit that lasts forever. And all of these games make their companies money hand over fist with skin sales, which is why those companies support their esports oh, scene. Nintendo Smash hasn't skins. seen a cent from Melee fans in two decades. Not to mention the fact that the competitive Smash scene is a minuscule fraction of the overall Smash audience. I think it's getting bigger. I mean, it's still infinitesimal, right? It's like 0.01. You, I don't think you guys know what it was like in Brawl where, like, you were a competitive player and people would, like, just lambast you. People hated you for being competitive back then. People couldn't stand that. Uh, it, it, you were like a pariah. Nintendo just doesn't care about competitive Smash. And why Whether would they? Whether they should or shouldn't is irrelevant. They don't. In fact, sometimes Nintendo actively works against the Smash community. Well, Yo, Ninj, did you borrow from me or someone? When the f are you helping out the Smash community? All right, listen, bro. I've this been waiting. I've been waiting. Dude, we know that was on Nintendo. The streets are wondering. That was on Nintendo, not me. You know what? The word. Dude, I'm so glad that he asked this, so Ninja could actually talk about it. Ninja's been waiting to air this out for years. I'm positive. Ninja was waiting for the opportunity. Finally. All I wanted to do was this was was to create a massive tournament, and all I wanted, I literally wanted to just juice Evo like 500k. 500k. I know. Bro, imagine if you play Street Fighter and this fucking blue-haired influencer just put 500k on Mario versus Pikachu. Oh fuck me. And so Smash prize pools are gonna continue to languish, at least under the current model. Well, like I said earlier, well, this conversation crops up once every couple of months ah, when a pro yeah, is yeah, frustrated yeah. by the pittance they got for playing Melee. Sure, and sure, sure, it's sure. not a new thing. We've had these conversations literally dozens of times for years. What is this? This is a big house. Embarrassing prize pools for Smash Ultimate. What do you mean? The backpack? The controller? <laughs> Come on! Who doesn't like some eShop points? I feel like this, th this comes up a lot too, where people talk about the Nintendo tournaments specifically like the online ones that i've done i just don't really care like i think it's okay to have less competitive tournaments i think we have plenty of competitive tournaments there was a fucking uh invitational at the invitational they had picto chat on they had uh what else on they had a couple different stages legal nobody wanted that everybody just went to ps2 anyway and I get why, but I also think that it takes some of the magic away from the game. Because there's so many stages. And I think the item interactions are so neat sometimes. When I was a kid, I would play Smash 4 on the bus and would make my friends play competitively. Oh, dude, everybody. Dude, I, okay. In the Brawl days, that happened all the fucking time. Where Brawl players would like go into like a college dorm or like a casual setup, like a party, and be like, hey, turn off the items. Go to Battlefield. It's like, no, we're playing for fun. No, you gotta play, you gotta do it the right way. I'm gonna pick Meta Knight. <laughs> that happened all the fucking time. It was bad.
I think everyone agrees that we're not expecting tournament organizers to just open up their wallets and fork over thousands of dollars to top players just for playing the game. Well, I think some people are asking for that. But the fact of the matter is, melee prize pools do seem to be shrinking as less people enter tournaments in the post-COVID era. So let's sure. talk about some solutions, ones that don't involve whining about Nintendo. First, there's crowdfunding which has worked to great effect in the Melee scene in the past, but does come with its own issues. Mm. See, Smash Summit crowdfunds their prize pools, leading to each Summit no. event having some of the highest prize pools in the scene. Dude, were any of you around? I think, I think a lot of you might not have been around for this. During Smash 4, there was a compendium every fucking week to get people out there, to fly people out, to do some kind of thing. People got so burnt out and exhausted of spending money. And I think it's happening with Summit, too. If you look at the latest Summits, he's probably going to say this. The latest Summits prize pools are low. Melee Smash Summit 11 had a $153,372 crowdfunded prize pool. Damn, dude! Number go down! Oh, shit! Look at that! Oh, my God! I never looked at it side by side. Damn, Coinbase, what happened? <laughs> and Smash Summit 13 went all the way down to $29,000. Monte, Monte got out. Those are still quite high. Coney, does it have to do with who's in Summit? Um, I think the campaign experience sucks as a Summit attendee. So you never do it more than once, which means you campaign for your one tournament and then you get in, which means that over time, after more and more Summits, the field gets less and less interesting, I think, for a casual viewer. Because it's like, well, I already saw X. I already saw these people. I already saw these people. I already saw these people. Why do I care? You know what I mean? Why, d d how do you, you can't care as much about some of the other stuff, so. Entry fees from $10 to $20. This solution has been floated by top players in the past. And look, it would literally double all prize pools by having the community chip in a little Double more. doesn't really On help On the surface, that, much, that makes yeah. sense. After all, it's just $10. But at the same time, critics of raising entry fees have noted that on top of your entry fee, you're probably also paying for hotels, registration, travel, it's food. It's 10 more Going dollars. From $10 to 20 could be the straw that breaks the camel's back when it comes to someone choosing to enter a tournament or not. I don't believe that for a fucking second. I've never believed this. Listen, I, I understand the aversion to pay extra ten dollars because you think it's like a it's a slippery slope and the idea is you know if i pay ten dollars now they're gonna want triple and but like i get people not wanting to do it is it going to be a deal breaker absolutely not no no nobody's going to a, not going to a tournament because it's ten dollars more that's crazy i think but maybe i'm wrong let a tournament try it we'll see I didn't go to the last pound because I got to check out and that shit said $95 for early bird. <laughs> yeah, but how much of that was venue fee? I feel like that's it. But I, I hear you. I do hear you. <laughs> Especially considering it's Xanadu, bro. Come on. There's no easy answer here. Top players like Hungrybox and Elephant have said plenty of times that the reason they make such a stink about prize payouts is because they don't want the next generation of Melee players to be discouraged from getting into an already incredibly inaccessible game. And honestly, I think they're right. After all, yeah, if you're a new up and coming player and you get grind into melee your ass for the fucking money, top eight at a major, and you don't even make enough money to cover your registration, let alone your hotel fee, that's gonna feel really bad. You could never make money from melee. There's no way you're ever making money from melee. Nobody ever did that. You make money from going to melee tournaments and then getting good and then shit posting tier lists on the internet. That's always been the fucking model. But the fact that Melee doesn't have giant piles of money being poured into the scene from who knows where is what keeps the game sustainable and why it's going to last a lot longer than every other esport on the planet. Nah, I hope so. There's always the fear, right? Dude, I gotta be honest. Jmook is came at the perfect fucking time. Thank God for Jmook. Thank the Lord above that he sent that young man with perfect posture down from heaven. He's sent over and everybody loves to watch him. He's redefining an, an old character that people sort of wrote off. Marth wasn't really that, but you get what I'm saying. 
because there is this whole doomer thing which which honestly still prevails where it's like what do you do after mango armada hbox you know after they're all gone calling your top five players gods is gross yeah that's a whole different conversation that shit was always weird melee's whole cult thing has always been really bizarre to me as an outsider but part of me feels like it's still the chip on my shoulder that i've held from people making that game their entire identity and and being weird and strange about it back when i was competitive any brawl player that was around back then still has like a except for probably larry <laughs> i don't think larry gives a shit but brawl players have this have this sense of like this keen eye for like oh, this motherfucker and everybody's cool now everybody's friends but like i think it was more a low to mid-level thing that melee players would like make the whole game their identity and be really obnoxious you know but at the end of it all there are still going to be two people sitting in front of a shitty crt monitor holding gamecube controllers CRT playing monitor. for 75 oh, I guess that is what they're called, isn't it? <laughs> and that's beautiful yeah, pretty good movie, I guess. Uh, this is just the same topic that's been going around for a while. I just want an excuse to talk about it, and now we have. Where should more money come from? I don't fucking know. How about you give me... Hey, comment below what you think. Well, you got an idea, right? You got a rich uncle or something? Tell him to fund Smash. And tell him to subscribe if this goes on YouTube. I'm in, I, I've been Coney with a red Slurpee. Remember to subscribe. Everybody say bye. Bye, YouTube. Goodbye. Bye, YouTube, I guess. Yeah, I don't know if this is going up.